Hey everyone, this is Dr. Leila Galben, and today I'm going to discuss the second part of your book, English Phonetics, second year. And please open your books on page 25, and here we go. In this lecture, we're going to uh, discuss the following. Number one, uh, phonemes and allophones. Number two, uh, complementary distribution and free variation. Number three, neutralization. Number four, the syllable and the structure of a syllable. And number five, sonority scale. Uh, here we go. Let's start with the first topic, phonemes and allophones. What is a phoneme? We talked about this before, and we said that the phoneme is the smallest contrastive unit. If we change the phoneme, we change the meaning of the whole word. And also, we said that a phoneme is uh, a segment of a speech because speech, as you know, is a continuous flow of sound, and we segment it, and the smallest segment is called the phoneme. Uh, each phoneme is made up of a number of allophones. It's a family of allophones, a different uh, realization, different sound, but all belong to the same uh, phoneme, okay? Uh, so each phoneme, as we said, is a family of sounds, and uh, these sounds are called allophones. W and w we discussed li uh, last time what's meant by allophones. Allophones are variants, different variants, different pronunciations of a single phoneme depending on the surrounding sound in which this phoneme occur in a particular word. Um, and this is uh, very clear from uh, lecture number one. Okay, uh, let's talk about the allophonic variation and the relationship between allophones of a single phoneme, okay? Uh, how do they relate to each other? How do, uh, w and what are the different kinds of relations? Okay, let's look at the first kind, which is complementary distribution. And it's, it's a mutually exclusive relationship. If one, if one phoneme occurs in a particular environment, the other, uh, if one allophone occurs in a particular environment, the other allophone cannot occur in the same environment. And let's take an example, okay, uh, and open it on page 25. Uh, and here we have the, um, the phoneme la. And as you see, it has three allophones. Three, uh, it occurs in three uh, different phonetic uh, context. One of them is the clear la. This comes before vowels. Number two, dark la before consonant and uh, or a bose. And number three, voiceless la. And this uh, uh, comes after p or k. Okay. And these are the three allophones of la: clear, voiceless, and dark. Okay. If 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 um, if la it comes at the beginning of a word uh, before vowels. It cannot be velarized. It cannot be do uh, dark. It cannot be voiceless. It must be clear. So the voiceless allophone of la cannot come here in this context where it should be clear. And it cannot come also. It cannot come also here in, in this context where it should be dark. So each context necessitates a particular pronunciation of a particular allophone. So uh, if an allophone uh, comes in a particular point, a particular situation, a particular environment, it cannot be replaced by any other allophone of the same phoneme. So the clear la here cannot be replaced by the voiceless la, or nor by the dark uh, la, okay? Each one must be there and must uh, get st uh, stuck in its position. It n it they do not replace one another, okay? And let's see, look at different forms of the uh, allophones of la. Uh, this is clear la uh, as lately before uh, uh, vowels, as you see. And the number two, we have dark la uh, after vowels and at the end as in ball and as in told and as in children. And also we have the uh, third allophone, the third form or the third variant of uh, la, which is the uh, voiceless la after clean, after ka in clean and pa in playroom. Okay, as you see here, you know that la is 
inherently a, is a voiced consonant, but because it comes after a ka in clean and p in play, it loses this uh, feature of voicing and it becomes devoiced. It becomes voiceless. So we say it and we put this mark to indicate this feature, which is mas minus voicing or voicelessness. Okay? So these are the three allophones of the phoneme la, as you see, and each one is restricted to uh, a particular context and cannot be replaced by any other allophone. So this kind of relationship is called a uh, complementary distribution. It's called di di what? Um, complementary distribution, and this is the um, a, you know, uh, one of the forms of uh, relationship between between allophones of a particular phoneme. Okay, let's move to another uh, distribution, which uh, which uh, or another relation, which is free variation. And free variation in the interchangeable, they can interchange, they can swap, they can replace one another. Elephants can replace one another. Free variation is the interchangeable relation between two phones or two allophones of a single phoneme, in which the phones may substitute, you know, it's a key word here. Let me color it, yeah. Uh, they may substitute for one another in the same environment without causing a change in meaning. And this sort of relationship is called free variation. And we have examples. For example, uh, here we have. Let's look at the. Um, uh, let's look at uh, the book here. Back to page. Uh, the following page. I want you to turn the page, and we have page twenty-six. Uh, some examples. Top of uh, top of the page. Um, let me tell you. Yes, a uh, free variation here. Um, has to do with a replacement of sound. And here we have the example here. Uh, example, the word Britain. It could be said with uh, t as t is in Britain. And t could be s pronounced as a glottal stop uh, as in Britain. OK, and the two realizations are uh, uh, f coming in sort of free variation. And if we change replace replace one by another, it doesn't uh, change the meaning of the word. It remains Britain. Whether we say it Britain or Britain, it doesn't make any difference. So the relationship between ta and the relationship between a and a, uh, it's a sort of uh, free variation. Once uh, one of them replaces the other, that doesn't cause a change in the meaning of the word. Okay, we have other examples. Uh, one, for example, between R and R in uh, Dutch and in French. Uh, they can replace one another without changing the meaning of words. And we have also another example uh, from, um, you know, uh, in Australia, in, uh, where Australian children um, may pronounce the, uh, the sound uh, or the word to start with A. Uh, when they are playing in the playground, they say stat, and uh, of course there is no R. And in the classroom, they say start, the uh, standard pronunciation, which has greater social pres prestige. So here, uh, this variation uh, has to do with the social, uh, really the social uh, influence of. Uh, uh, of sounds or of uh, forms, okay? So um, with, with one another, children say the less standard pronunciation is that, but when they talk to, uh, t to the teacher and uh, inside the classroom, they turn to the standard. The same happens when we have, uh, for example, the receptionist who is working in a hotel and talking to clients, he use um, word for example water or butter okay and uh, but when talking to his colleagues he may turn to the uh, non-standard form and say ba -a and wa -a and so on so here we have social influences that affect the uh, free variation of the allophones of a single phoneme however we have to say that these variation do not change the meaning of the word and it's just a social uh, 
in, in social in nature okay so these are the two things that i want to talk about here in this regard okay let's talk about a second uh, topic which is um you know neutralization uh, and neutralization as you see here is the loss of a contrast that normally exists between two sounds in certain environments okay uh, so uh, we have two sounds which are different and each one has its own identity uh, they look uh, there is a distinction a contrast between them but in certain situation in certain environment in certain positions in words uh, the this such a distinction and such a contrast disappears it no longer exists let's look at uh, this example here we have a uh, bat okay and bud but here in Amer in american english they say bedding okay wait and wait in american english they say waited so the t and d they lose the distinction and they turn into one sound so in the above example the contrast between t and d is neutralized and it have in which in which environment when they come between two vowels this is in american english as you see let's go back to our book for more examples okay neutralization here he's give the uh, the two authors by the way we are uh, discussing uh, uh, book uh, our book is uh, practical english uh, practical, uh, practical uh, phonetics and phonology um, and uh, um, we have two examples here the first example is ma the second is na and uh, this couple of sounds, as you see, they are nasal consonants. However, if they are followed by a f or a, a v, they turn into uh, this distinction. They are no longer different. Ma and na are no longer different. They lose such a distinction and they turn into an uh, an m. Uh, for example, in the word emphatic. Okay, the word emphatic and the word infatuated, uh, we have infatuated, you know, infatuated, emphatic. So N, na, turns into ma. So ma and na do not become, uh, are no longer different, uh, are no longer contrastive, and they become neutral in the sense that they assimilate to ma. We have only ma due to the um, coming of the fa sound after uh, the two words so in the first example is ma na after fa or va they turn into one sound and in and in this case they become neutralized uh, because why because the opposition is a, is a very important sense here because the opposition between ma and na has been neutralized and we call this phoneme neutralization okay um so this is one example we have also another example uh, the sounds uh, p, uh, and uh, t, uh, these uh, the three um uh, consonants plosive uh, voiceless consonants p, t, and k, uh, uh, you know that we aspirate them we pronounce them with audible puff of air when they come at the beginning of words so we say ka we say uh, pen we say time and so on but when these sounds are um, preceded by a, an s or by a sa they turn into their voiced consonants uh, vo voiced equivalents ba, da, ga. so we do not say uh, spa or sta or ska no w the the b, the t, the ka lose the aspiration features they are no longer aspirated why because of the s sound that comes before them which doesn't give them the chance to be aspirated as they are before at the beginning uh, in words such as uh, pen and uh, time and car okay so sa makes this this, this uh, uh, feature of aspiration stops and so they are these sounds are no longer no longer aspirated so you say uh, spar you don't say spa you say star 
you don't say star. Uh, you, uh, you say ska, you say ska, you don't say ska, okay? So, pa, when they come after essa, they are no longer aspirated, and in this case, they become so similar to their uh, uh, voice, the equivalents, ba, ja, ga, respectively. So, pa becomes ba, ta becomes ja, Ga, uh, ka becomes ga, they become voicing, uh, voiced just like their sisters, okay? So this is what we want to talk about here. Also, you have uh, some, uh, let's tell, uh, tell, let me tell you where are we. Yes, so, uh, we turn to page 28 or 28, and we have uh, on top of the page, we have... Um, uh, some examples of uh, of uh, uh, sounds which are uh, neutralized. Uh, for example, in most varieties of English, there is a distinction between u uh and a. Uh, but in Northern English, they s they, they, these two sounds are collapsed into one, so they are neutralized. حصل عملية neutralization بقى. The contrast بينهم disappears. فبقى one sound which is u. Uh. We understand. So instead of saying cup, and uh, they say cup. Instead of saying uh, sun, they say son. Okay? Uh, they don't have this sound. Okay? Also, we have another example in uh, Welsh, U, uh, and uh, uh, U, and so on. Uh, in, uh, in most varieties, we have only one U, but in Welsh English, such a distinction comes. And... Uh, um, uh, this is another example of the uh, how sounds are neutralized and uh, how so and, and this means that two sounds which are in contrast are no longer distinctive and they lose such uh, distinction and they collapse into one instead of two we have one so man man in the first example they change into uh, just a uh, just a ma and uh, we have uh, uh, in the second example, they uh, are no longer aspirated and they become similar to and uh, and uh, in the, uh, northern English, uh, they uh, are no longer distinctive and only one of them, which is uh, functions instead of both, okay? So these are forms of new or examples of neutralization uh, or lack of contrast between sounds. Okay, let's move to another thing, which is uh, the syllable. Okay, and move on to page, uh, yes, 28 and 29. Uh, first of all, what is a syllable? Let me take you to another thing. Um, yes, a syllable, okay. Uh, is a sound unit that is higher than the phoneme. We can say that the syllable is commonly defined as a sound unit which is larger than the phoneme. Uh, this is a simple uh, definition of this uh, term. And uh, uh, we want to know what is the structure of syllables. And uh, uh, let's see uh, how languages differ with regard to the uh, different uh, structures of uh, syllable in, the, in, in these languages. Okay, um, yes, this is the structure of a syllable. Um, you see a syllable at the top, and we have onset and dryam. Okay, onset and dryam. Okay, these are the two components. And uh, uh, we have, let's look at the word plant, or yeah, the word plant, plant, as you see. Uh, we have the onset, p and l, two uh, c's, uh, co two consonants, c means consonant and v means a vowel. And uh, look at the rhyme. The rhyme here is also divisible into two components, nucleus, which is, you, you know, it must be a vowel, a v, it must be a v, a vowel, and coda. And as you see here, it, uh, it we have uh, two C's. There must be two C's here. Plant, okay, plant, okay, coda. 
uh, two consonants at the end. So we have a, a syllable is made up of two parts, onset and rhyme. And the rhyme is divisible into two elements, uh, nucleus and coda. And as you see, this is a representation of the syllable structure in a word such as plant, which is one syllable word. Okay. Now, of course, there are different theories for the for for uh, what 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 we mean by um, by the syllable. Okay. But let's go directly to English syllable structure, and also we have any another example before talking about this. Let's look at the example in your book. I switch to book here. Yes, this is an example of the word strands. Strands. Okay. The onset is. Uh, um, Syllable onset and rhyme. The onset is made up of three uh, consonants, so to and r, and uh, the rhyme, as you see, divisible into two parts, a uh, nucleus, a uh, a, uh, it's a vowel, and the coda, as you see, we have uh, three consonants in the coda. We have n, d, and z. Okay, let's look at the examples. A very interesting uh, uh, part here, uh, for example. Uh, the minimum, you know, the minimum uh, syllable is called minimum because it's made only of one uh, sound, which is V, um, as in O, O, and it could be, uh, a syllable could be CV, as in, uh, in means a consonant, vowel, as in SO, it could be uh, VC, as in uh, OAT, it could be uh, CVC, as in SON, CV, uh, C, C, as in loans and uh, and so on look at here at the bottom we have this is we call the last two we call them the maximum syllables because each one of them is made up of how many of seven sounds seven seven sounds look at the strains three consonants vowel and three consonants seven and look at glimpse two consonants vowel and four consonants so it's uh, you know very um, and you know uh, amazing uh, distribution of consonants and vowels inside the English syllable. And we have to know that the syllable in English is so complicated, and the English language is one of the languages which has the most complicated and, um, you know, and the most complex structure ever in among languages with regards to syllable structure, okay? And this is what I uh, have, for example, the word key, only CV, the word O, and so on. Uh, okay, let's uh, have uh, a look at some rules, some rules that must be taken into consideration when we come to make a syllable. Because uh, there are rules, these rules are must be obeyed, must be obeyed. Okay, uh, first, okay. Uh, we have to know that uh, uh, when we have two consonants at the beginning in the onset, uh, we cannot have any two consonants. Uh, the structure of the consonant cluster or consonant string is, um, you know, determined by a number of rules. So let's look at the, some of these rules. When you have two initial consonants, okay, uh, the, we have two rules. Number one. Uh, the initial consonant is s followed by t, p, k, l, m, uh, r, m, n, l, w, y, or f. So this is the first rule. Either you start with s, and if you start with s, the second consonant must be one of these sounds or consonants. Okay. So can you start a consonant, uh, can you start a syllable with sa plus, for example, ga? No. Can you start a syllable with sa plus uh, b plus uh, d uh, plus v, v? No, no, not, not acceptable. So if you start with a sa, and the second consonant must be one of them. Okay, in case you have only two consonants at the beginning, in the onset, okay? This is rule number one. Rule number two, okay? Uh, 
the rule number two. The initial consonant, you can start with any consonant. You can start the, with any consonant except ing and j. Uh, and uh, okay, and the second consonant must be la, ra, wa, or ya. Okay, you can start with any consonant of the 24 consonant, but except except ing and and j. You cannot start a syllable with any of them, especially ing. Okay. Uh, and if you start uh, with j, most probably these are words brought from other languages. They are loan words, okay? So you have the, uh, the freedom to start with any consonant uh, 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 except for uh, ing or j. Uh, and the second consonant must be بقى خلاص تبدأت بالأولين أي حاجة ما عدا ing and j. The second بقى consonant let me uh, one of these okay it could, it could be l sorry it could be wa it could be la it could be ra it could be ya etc okay okay um in case you have three initial consonants only three initial consonants you have a rule now okay this rule is very simple the first consonant must be sa تمام يبقى عندك ثلاثه بقى عايز تبدا بثلاثه كونسلنت تمام ذا فيرست كونسلنت ماست بي سا ذا سيكند ماست بي وان اوف ذا ب ت اور ك اند ذا ثيرد ماست بي وان اوف ذا ذيس فور ات كود بي لا ات كود بي را ات كود بي وا ات كود بي يا اوكي سو ليتس هاف سم اكزامبلز اند ليتس جو باك تو يور بوك اوكي يس Oh, more, more uh, rules, yes. Uh, ing never, yes. Ing never occurs in onsets, yes. Ha, wa, uh, uh, ya never occurs in codes, yes. This is true. We do not have uh, uh, English syllables uh, or English words in general ending with ha or ya or wa. In Rhotic accents, such as uh, American English, you can end a syllable with R, but in British English, especially R's, uh, RP, uh, uh, you cannot end with R because final R is dropped. They do not pronounce it, okay? The leanest uh, fricatives, F, uh, Z, uh, Z, uh, J, never occur at the second element of the onset احنا قلنا خلاص ان انا لما هبدا ال two syllable two uh, consonants توي في uh, syllable uh, عندي two rules اما ابدا بسا و number of of consonants زي ما احنا قلنا كده اهو سا followed by any of these consonants or ان انا ابدا باي consonant any consonant ما عدا دول and جا plus واحد من الاربعه دول one, one of these four consonants ده في حالة إيه؟ When I start with an onset that is made up of two consonants. Okay? طب if you have an onset made up of three consonants, the قاعدة سهلة جدا. Then you start with S. And the second consonant must be one of three. P, T, or K. And the third consonant must be one of four. لا, ر, و, or, يا. Yeah. I think that this is clear. This is clear. Okay? This is as far as the uh, the beginning or the onset. As far as the coda, a coda, as a, we have a, a number of rules, any consonant can be final except ha, ra, wa, and ya. On ha, wa, and ya in all English models, uh, but in American English, you can end with an R. Uh, the two... Um, Uh, consonant, the two final consonant sequences have two possibilities. Hatin hi ba abitnin consonant fil koda. Halazim bardo andi rules. I must obey these rules. Now we have something called pre final consonant. El kabl el akhir, pre final. With a wahid one of these five ma, na, a wadin ing, la, and so. Okay, so we have help, example, help. الأخير إيه؟ ب طب والبري فاينال؟ لا 
ماشي اوكي اتس وان اوف ذيم اوف ذيس اسك وات از ذا فاينل كونسلنت ك اند وات از ذا بري فاينل س يس از ات اوكي يس اتس اوكي بيكوز اتس وان اوف ذيس بري فاينل فايف بري فاينل ما خرجتش منهم اه سينك امم ذيس از ان كي ليتس جيت ات هير ذيس كونسلنت ان copy and put it here ink yes okay so this is sink لانه عندي ink انها فولد باي كا اور جا it turns into ink طب ink واحد منهم يعني ده صح كده yes لان ing is one of the of the five consonants that can be brief final tab jam okay jam tab sen sen okay yes jam نفس الكلام ما is one of the brief final consonant and b is final sen n is a brief final consonant واحد من الخمسة هم and is final okay number b a final consonant followed by a post final لما يبقى عندي بقى فما عنديش بري فاينل بس عندي فاينل وبوست فاينل اوكي فور اكزامبل ذا وورد يبقى لازم هيبقى برضو ون اوف اوف وات اوف فور ات كو بي تا اند اور دا ان ات كو بي سا اند ذا اوكي لوك ات ذا وورد ورك ورك اند اف يو اد ذا اي دي ات تورنز انتو تا اوكي اف لو ذا وورد ساند اوكي ذا وورد ساند Okay, and the the word cats of the consonant, sen, n, n, and the word cats. Look at cats, t, and s, dogs, g, and s. When in the in it s and s, they are the two realizations of the s plural, and you s after. Uh, in um, you know singular words ending with voiceless consonants such as cat cats and the after voice consonants dog dogs okay and you have eight so could be added to this okay so these are uh, some of the rules m that must be obeyed Here, there let's go back to your book okay As a uh, number five, the um, the three element onset uh, cluster uh, clusters in the initial the initial consonant is invariably sa. I start uh, with three consonants. Have that be the letter consonant. Let's be the first one sa. With the second one of three p t or k. With the third one of four la wa ra or ya. Type t d z. ت د ا س نيفر كومباين وذ لا احنا بقى خلاص خدنا القواعد اللي خدناها لو مشينا عليها مش هنبقى محتاجين كل اول ذيس رولز اوكي نيزلز كومباينينج وذ ستوب اوكي يس سو اي ثينك ذات ذيس از فيري اوكي ويتش اوف ذيس ار بيرميزبل سيلابلز ان انجلش اند اكسبلين واي وات اي اي اوكي ليتس لوك ات ذيس ها س ب ر ا از ذيس انجلش يس Why? Because we here we have three consonants. The first is sa, the second is ba, the second, the third is ra, and all these um, consonants are obeying the rules of uh, uh, of English onset, English syllable onset. Okay, the is the number two. Va wa a ka sa. Is this an English syllable? Is it acceptable? Is it permissible? Of course, no, because we cannot. We cannot be followed by wa, okay? V cannot be followed by wa. I can start with V, but V cannot be fo followed by ra, uh, by wa, okay? Um, uh, gua, نفس الكلام, and so on. Okay, so please check uh, this part. And let's go to the structure of uh, syllables, okay? It's very easy to identify the number of syllables in a word. Just count the number of vowels. For example, the word um, uh, believe, believe. How many syllables do you think? Uh, 
two. Yeah, two. One of the, the first is be, and the second is live. Uh, the word education, how many syllables? Education, four syllables. Uh, the word um, syllables itself, syllables, three syllables, and so on. It's uh, very easy to identify and how to celebrify this is by ears, but when it comes to uh, identifying the structure, sometimes people um, uh, do not agree. Um, there is no consensus among people with regard to the boundaries of uh, of syllables. So look at the w this word, the word extra, uh, and we have five uh, syllabifications, five, um, you know. Um, Yes, boundaries, bow, putting boundaries in between the two syllables. So we can say a uh, and extra. The second could be ek and stra. It could be number three, ex and tra. Number four, extra and dr. Number five, extra mm and un. Okay. Here, if you look at the structure of each one of them, we're going to eliminate the first and the last. Why? Because if you look at the first structure, okay, the first, okay, uh, syllable, uh, sorry, the structure of the second syllable in the first example, uh, we have ka-sa-ta-ra, four consonants. You cannot have a syllable starting for, with four consonants. It's not acceptable. No onset in English has four consonants, so it's wrong. It's not acceptable. Look at the second. Yes, this is acceptable. Look at the third, yes, it's acceptable. Look at the fourth, yes, it's acceptable. You can start with ra plus schwa. Okay. Okay. However, look at this. Look at this. Axed. So, to some extent, uh, could be acceptable. Okay. Axed. Uh, we have a, a no onset, but you have a, a, a nucleus and rhyme. It's okay, but look at this. Yes, look at this. Uh, not obeying the rules of the English language because you cannot end a word, a syllable with an R, okay, this way. And uh, look at the structure. They are not, not obeying the rules of the English coda, okay? Hope that this is clear. And finally, I want to move on to one last topic, which is uh, please do the exercise on page um, 20, uh, on page 30 and page 31. And let's go to uh, uh, the last point here in, your, in our discussion, which is the sonority scale. Okay. And sonority scale, please open your books on page uh, 32. And here we have we differentiate between vowels and consonant with regard to the degree of sonority and uh, how, or, uh, or, uh, how they are heard easily, um, vowels or consonants, uh, etc. And we know that English vowels and vowels in general in any language are louder than consonants. And this means that they are more sonorous than consonants. However, not all vowels uh, have the same um, degree of sonority and also uh, uh, not all consonants have the same degree of sonority. So sonority here has to do with degree of noise and degree of loudness uh, in, in uh, that uh, each vowel and each consonant uh, has. Okay, first uh, we have low vowels. Okay, Wha what do I mean by low vowels? Open vowels. They are the most sonorous. Mid vowels, with our mouth open between mid open mid close, uh, and then we have high vowels, which m uh, uh, we can say that they are the closed vowels, closed vowels, closed vowels such as e uh, and o uh, e uh, o uh, These are 
uh, four closed vowels they are not as sonorous as the open vowels ah a ah o all these are open vowels and then we have uh, laterals and we have nasals and voiced uh, fricatives and voiceless fricatives and st voice stops and voiceless stops and so on. So the least, or the, 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 we have the least sonorous are the sonorous are the uh, voiceless plosive consonants as we see. Let's look at, by the way, the word stops means plosives. Not to be um, worried about terminology change. Here, here we go, and uh, let's have a look at the uh, sonority scale in your book. Okay, we have the first open vowels, A and A, closed vowels, E and O, nasal consonants, and approximate, na, la, ra. Uh, okay, and then voiced fricatives, so and the, voiceless fricatives, voiced plosives, B, D, and voiceless plosives, uh, P and T. And uh, here you can you find that the more we, uh, we open our mouth, the uh, the uh, the louder and the sonorous, the uh, and the more sonorous the sounds will be. And here you find that the voiced consonants, whether homo fricatives or plosives, are usually more sonorous and louder than the voiceless consonants. Okay. And uh, I talked, uh, and this, il, il, look at this, voiceless plows of consonant p, t, and k, you know. Uh, as you see, they are the least sonorous. Uh, they, uh, we, and we hear them, um, you know, um, not so easily. And this is why when they come at the beginning, I think when, when they come at the beginning of words, they are aspirated. Aspiration makes them stronger, makes them more prominent, more... Uh, audible, heard, more, you, you make them heard uh, so easily, more easily. So aspiration, I think, is uh, a necessity to give some sort of strength um, to uh, uh, and loudness to such uh, 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 sounds. Uh, which come at uh, the end of the scale, as you see, they are at the bottom of the scale. Uh, as you see, on top of the, t of the scale, we have open vowels, and uh, bottom of the scale, we have the uh, voiceless plosive consonants. It's a very important and very nice thing to know about the degree of sonority and the degree of loudness in the noise um, and the strengths of. Uh, uh, and the hearing, uh, uh, you know, capacity uh, of each uh, kind of uh, vowels and consonants. Okay, please do the exercises and uh, um, uh, see you next time and thank you.